Hello friends, this is Hector Perez from Dev School. In this new video, we are going to learn how to use the camera to take photos in Xamarin forms. This task is essential for many applications that are currently available in the app stores. Whether it's for scanning various purchase tickets, processing data, or for a social app. So, there are numerous approaches where we could use a camera in our applications. Let's learn how to use the camera and how to take photos from Xamarin Forms. To implement this, we will use a Nuget package called Media Plugin. The advantage of using this plugin is that we won't need to write code for each platform we're implementing this functionality on, as taking a photo on a mobile device requires native code on each platform. So, this package will greatly simplify this task for us. Let's proceed with the task of installing the Nuget package. What we're going to do is go to the solution, right click, manage Nuget packages for the solution, and in the section that says browse, we're going to search for the media plugin. Okay, it's this package here, developed by James Montemagno. We will select all the projects and install this Nuget package on each one of them. This is important as we will be using native functionalities. Once we have successfully installed the Nuget package, this readme.txt file will pop up, showing us the various steps we need to take to configure the projects to work with this Nuget package. Well, the project that requires the most configuration is the Android project. What we need to do first is, as indicated here, add this method to our mainactivity.cs file. We're going to go to our Android project, open the mainactivity.cs file, and at the bottom, if we look closely, with the new implementations of Xamarin Forms, we have this method called onRequestPermissionsResult already created. We're going to go back to the readme file, copy this line of code that appears in this file, and paste it between the two lines that are already pre-configured. Okay, let's save the changes. The second step we need to do is, within the same mainActivity.cs file, go to the method called onCreate. And before invoking the init methods, we're going to add a new line. Cross current activity dot current dot init, and here we're going to pass this and also save instant state, which is basically the bundle. Okay, we now have our main activity class configured. Now that we have configured our class, let's close it. And the next step, according to the documentation, is to go to the Android manifest. We're going to open the file going to the project's Android Properties section, and here we have the Android Manifest.xml file. We open it, go back to the readme file, and we're going to copy this section that says Provider. We copy the section and paste it within our tag called Application, this one we have here. If you notice, we can place code in the middle, so we're going to paste this code. Let's save the changes. And now we have this file ready. We're going to proceed to close it. The next step is that we need to create a folder named XML within the resources of the Android project. So, let's open the Explorer. Here we have the Android project, we have the Resources folder. Let's expand it, and within the Resources folder, we're going to create a new folder called XML. Once we've created this folder, we're going to right-click on it to add a new item, and the new item is going to be an XML file type. This file needs to be named filepaths.xml. We're going to add this file. We'll go back to the readme.txt file and copy this code that appears here in this file. We return to the filepaths.xml file and replace all the content. We save the changes, and we've successfully configured the Android project. Let's close each of these files so they don't cause us any distractions. To carry out the configuration in iOS, we're going to open the file called info.plist, which is located within the iOS-based project. We right-click, open with, select the XML editor, and click OK. I accidentally closed the readme file, but here I have it again. And if we look at the readme file at the bottom part, we have the configuration for iOS, and it indicates that we need to place these keys and their respective strings in the info.plist file. So, I'm going to proceed to copy all this code we have here. I will copy it, return to the project, and at the very bottom, before this edit closure, 
I will proceed to paste these lines that I copied earlier. I saved the changes and we're now ready to proceed with iOS. In the case of the Universal Windows platform, what we need to do is right click on the project and in the properties section, we're going to click on the button that says Package Manifest. This opens the Application Manifest and in the Capabilities section, we need to enable the capability, which we find at the very bottom. It's located as the last option. I'm going to select this option, save the changes, and we're now ready to continue with the Universal Windows platform. OK, we've set up the projects. What's the next step? Well, it's to answer the question, how to take photos with the mobile device. What we're going to do is define a file content page with two elements. First, we're going to define what an image element is, where an image or a photo that we've taken will be displayed, and at the bottom, a button for us to take the photo. So, let's return to the Explorer and open the main page.xaml file. We're going to replace this stack layout content. We're going to place what is a grid element. Inside, we're going to declare grid.row definitions. And we're going to define two rows. The first row will have a star height to occupy all the available space, and our second element will have what is an auto definition to occupy only the space related to the content. Within the same grid, we're going to proceed to define an image element, which will serve as the container for our captured photos. Let's give it a name, for instance, photo. Similarly, we're going to place a button element that will allow us to take the photos. Let's name it, for example, take photo, and position this element in row number one. We'll assign it a text so we know what this button refers to, for instance, take photo. Now we have our graphical interface. As you can see, it's a very simple interface. The next thing we'll do is define the event handler for this button. To do this, we'll go to the code behind our page and we'll indicate take photo.clicked. We create the respective event handler and in the event handler, we're now going to start coding the logic to take the photo. We're going to declare a variable called photo, which will be equal to a weight. To use a weight, we're also going to add a sync to this method, and after a weight, we're going to indicate that we wish to use plugin.crossmedia. Dot current. We have here the method called take photo async. As you can observe, this method requires an instance of store camera media options. So we're going to declare a new instance of this element. You'll see later why an instance of this element is needed. The next step will be to check if the user has taken a photo or cancelled it. So we can verify it through if photo is not equal to null. And in case it's not equal to null, we're going to specify the source of the image control called photo through photo.source, which will be equal to and we have here a class called image source with different methods to read information from various sources. We are interested in reading what a stream is as it is the type of data that this method take photo async handles. So we are going to use this method. And as you can see, this method asks us for a function. Therefore, through a Lambda expression, we will indicate that we want to return what is photo.getStream. And believe it or not, this is all the code needed to take a photo with our mobile device. We are going to set the Android project as the initial project. And we are going to start running the application. While this compilation is taking place, I invite you to subscribe to the channel, click on the bell to receive notifications about new videos related to Xamarin and programming in general, and share the video with your friends. Likewise, I invite you to my platform, courses.devschool, where you can get various courses related to Net Maui and general development. There is currently a discount on the page, so take advantage. All right, we now have the application here on our Android emulator. We have here the section where the image we take will be located, and we have the button that says Take Photo. Let's click on this button. It shows us this dialog asking if we want to give the application permission to access the multimedia content and files on the device. 
Let's allow it. And now we have our application displaying the device's camera. Let's take a photo. We indicate that we accept the changes. And now we have the photo in our image control. We can take another photograph if we wish so. And we can see that the photograph is placed in our image element. Okay, another additional point that we need to discuss is that, if you remember, we talked about this class called Store Camera Media Options. Basically, this class will allow us to make a change to the functionality of how the photograph is taken. Let's see a test of this. We're going to declare a new instance of this class. We'll create a variable called camera options, which will be equal to a new store camera media options. In a new line, we'll try to access its properties and methods. And as you can see, we have a series of properties that will allow us to work with the taken photograph. And this really opens up a wide range of possibilities in the application. For instance, let's say the application needs to scale the photograph so they don't come out too large in size. Well, we can configure this right from here. We can, for example, indicate that the photo size of our camera will be equal to, and we have here an enumeration with different parameters. Each of these parameters has a 25% difference. So suppose we want a photograph of very minimal quality, then we could use this enumeration and indicate this value. For this to work, we have to use this new instance that we have created and replace it with this instance that we have created manually. So instead of passing a new instance, we're going to pass this instance to which we have assigned this property earlier. Let's run the application to see how this photograph we take looks right now. We take the photograph. Okay, and notice how the image has been resized and we have a very low quality image since it's the minimum quality we can set. Notice the difference of this photograph compared to the change in photo size dot full. Observe the difference in image quality. Also, imagine for example that you want to save the photos you take directly to the camera roll. We have a property here, also part of this instance called Save to Album. And we're going to indicate that we indeed want to save the photos directly to the photo album. Let's start the application. We take the photograph. Okay, we have the photograph here. Let's check if it has been saved successfully. We open the gallery. And we have this folder called temp. And we see that the image has been saved successfully. Well, I hope you liked the video and remember to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell so you know when a new video is released. See you in the next video.